No, God, please, no, 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 no! Hello, darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk with you again. What's going on, guys? It's K Dub here with another episode of Crypto Zombie. So it is Monday, back on the grind. You guys might have seen that meme earlier with the sound, but then they added the stuff at the end. I thought it was really funny, so that's all over the internet. But we're just having some fun here on a Monday. If we have a look at what's going on, yes, we did take a bit of a hit. If you guys woke up this morning, you saw this. Oh no, panic in the streets. No, don't freak out. It's okay because we have been predicting this drop for weeks now. Ever since October 15th, we've been going completely completely sideways. It was to be expected. Here we hit the wedge. We still have this wiggle room to move around. We've been saying a potential $6,200 Bitcoin. We could see a $6,000 Bitcoin before. But I wanted to also just really quick point out, if we have a look at what's going on, there's really nothing happening in the markets. I mean, we have a few coins up for the day. NXT, Polymath, MobileGo, Funfair, Populous, Maker, which is, uh, you know, still tied to that stable coin. And then you have USD, TrueUSD, Paxos, Tether, Digix Dow. So basically everything's down today. But the one thing I wanted to point up, now that we have had this, you know, drop in Bitcoin price, I wanted to look at the Bitcoin chart, okay? The funny thing is when you compare these Bitcoin Bitcoin chart to other charts, you notice that they all look eerily similar. So for example, here's Cardano, right? Here's Icon. <laughs> so people saying, oh, you know, this, this is it, you know, throw in the towel. It's just market cycles. In fact, I want to show you guys something pretty cool. If we have a look at back to 2013, the Bitcoin chart, look at how eerily similar it is to the chart that we're experiencing right now. And we do know that markets move in cycles. So personally, when I'm looking at something like this or something you know that happened like this, I'm not freaking out because I see this long-term vision, you know, and if we zoom out to, you know, everything that's happened, we can clearly see that these bumps <laughs> were happening all back here as well. So personally, this is just accumulation period. This is time to really pick up those projects that you're interested in. And this is the time to really set yourself up for when that bull run eventually does happen. The thing too, that you have to note is that you can't just go off of price. You have to look at the space as well. For example, the demand for blockchain developers is still at an all time high. So if we come over here, you can see the CEO from Hired. He recently said that blockchain developers are reaping rewards of bigger salaries as this demand increases. You even have a software engineer, Dustin Weldon, who's working as a blockchain engineer for uh, Globus. And he said that as soon as he changed his job title from software engineer to principal blockchain engineer, he began receiving a ton more requests for jobs and startups via his LinkedIn. So clearly there is a demand for that. And I also wanted to talk about Joseph Lubin. So he's the co-founder of Ethereum, and he went on to recently say that we've seen booms and busts, but the crypto ecosystem has never been stronger. And he said that currently, while prices are in a bust, the fundamentals are actually booming due to a colossal increase in the number of projects, people, entrepreneurs, and developers that are actively involved in the space. So it is orders of magnitude bigger than it was, and the foundational infrastructure is getting built out. Look at the recent news cycle with Wall Street players and technology hotshots entering the space. He does, however, say that there is still regulatory uncertainty. He noted that when you boil down blockchain tech, it's all about decentralizing traditional systems like trade, finance, tokenized custody systems, and building infrastructures for sole purpose of facilitating digital asset ecosystem. So he explained that regulatory uncertainty has started to become a thing of the past in various different jurisdictions across the globe. So it's not just in the US, even though it is still a little shady here, we're not 100% sure, but you have to look at these other places as well. Japan basically just gave the green light for everyone to just go regulate it, right? They had their own thing that was created. Singapore, Malta, look at Malta, Binance, Zebpay, they rebranded and moved over there. It's like the blockchain crypto haven, right? So the thing is, you have seen these different jurisdictions express their willingness to adopt digital currencies with open arms, even though there are some restrictions and they're not 100% sure what to do with it exactly just yet. But take, for example, Fidelity. Everyone's getting excited about this. Could Fidelity potentially be the catalyst that will start the next bull run? It is quite possible. Now, although things like this go against owning your own Bitcoin peer-to-peer, -peer, you know, third-party 
you know, custody services aren't exactly like the decentralized vision, but inevitably you have to understand that this was going to happen either way. You know, your mom, your dad, your, you know, your cousin, your grandma, they're not going to get into these systems. They are used to traditional systems. So they need that comfort. And the interesting thing is that what, uh, when spoken to, uh, the president of Fidelity Digital Asset Services, Tom Jessup, he's actually said that they're not looking to do an exchange. He says that he thinks that, uh, you know, Coinbase and Binance are doing perfectly fine. They are focused on providing crypto custody solutions for institutional investors, even though we've already spoken about how they're already in because they've been buying up OTC. Trust me. But this is definitely going to spark a lot more of adoption as well. If you do want, you can listen to this uh, all on the podcast right here by Laura Shin Unconfirmed. I'll drop this below. But moving on to other stuff, you look at this and you know you have this article coming out from the former JP Morgan uh, trader Danny Masters, who's the chairman of CoinShares now, and he says that he thinks that you know, things like Coinbase could actually compete with the New York Stock Exchange. Coming down here, he says that, um, you know, the structure that they're putting together is a registered broker dealer, a registered investment advisor in all 50 states, and an automated channel zone to trading system. And once you put those three things together, plus their, well, it says 12.5, but they have 25 million uh, users. You know, they have their own stock market, essentially. And once they issue tokens on it, this is a competitor to the New York Stock Exchange and NASDAQ. He also says that there's three three phases of this adoption. We've already had the first wave. That was Bitcoin. Bitcoin arrived. It disrupted gold and money. Then we had the second wave, which, okay, he says Ethereum specifically. I think he's referring more to just these like smart contract platforms, you know, where you have the ability to form capital, right? You can have ICOs on them. So that happens really rapidly and very quickly. So the SEC doesn't like that, right? Initial coin offerings, that's a little bit you know, scary to them. It's been an issue for quite some time. So that's why he says the third wave will be that institutional wave, which is now you're seeing these security tokens, right? STOs beginning to replace ICOs now. And he says that this is that final wave to solidifying the technology and moving forward. Now, I want to drop this. This is institutions are coming for your crypto. I'm not going to go into this, but it's a pretty bullish article. It goes on to just touch on all of the things that have been happening, you know, over the course of the past few months with all these different guys coming in with ICE opening up backed and Fidelity and all these different ETFs with the STOs. Um, yeah, just check it out. It's it, I would just be regurgitating information that you guys are already used to, but it kind of, you know, compacts it all into one area. It was a really great article that kind of breaks that all down. And guys, if that's not bullish enough, you got Tim Draper still standing by his $250,000 Bitcoin by 2022. So, you know, he says right now there's 86 trillion of political currency. He calls it political currency. He says they call it fiat currency, but they're wrong. And I believe that the currency will slowly be eaten up by better currency, which is global and decentralized, and of course, frictionless. It's just a better currency. Bitcoin is a better currency, and I think it will be one of the five currencies. I don't know why he chose five, but he says five. So five currencies, sure. The last thing the SEC would do is to follow the decision that China has made. He goes on to say, I think the SEC is torn, and I think it's okay because they're torn between going after the fraudsters who are taking advantage of the elderly and making sure that all the technology does stay in the US. They know that it is a competitive world out there. So that is basically my my segment for the morning. I mean, yeah, we had the price drop. There has been some negativity. It is really boring right now. The markets are just like, oh, every day you wake up. I mean, actually, today was probably the most exciting day. I mean, yes, it went down. But that being said, guys, I just wanted to just show you how much positivity there still is in the space. And of course, now we have to get into our crypto coin token news of the day. So... First, I want to talk about Apex Technologies. So it says the leading technology publication Red Herring announced its 2018 Top 100 Global Winners list in recognition of the leading private technology companies from North America, Europe, and Asia celebrating these startups, innovations, and technologies across their respective industries. So Red Herring editors were among the first to recognize companies like Facebook, Twitter, Google, Yahoo, Skype, Salesforce, YouTube, and eBay, okay? So now they've actually added a crypto company, which is Apex 
Apex Technology. So if you come down here, it says that choosing companies with the strongest potential was by no means a small feat. Uh, a publisher of, and CEO of Red Herring said, after rigorous contemplation and discussion, we narrowed our list down from hundreds of candidates from across the globe to the top 100 winners. We believe Apex Technologies embodies the vision, drive, and innovation that define a successful entrepreneurial venture. Apex Tech should be proud of its accomplishment. And you've been seeing a lot of these blockchain crypto projects being featured. You know, you've been seeing, uh, you know, you had the CEO of Bancor getting featured in, in a list as well. So you're definitely seeing, uh, you know, more people take these blockchain startups seriously as well. Now, I wanted to talk about Icon showcasing three joint blockchain apps with the Seoul government. So I will drop the Medium post for you. There is a video. So in the video, they talk about it. So basically, they have the blockchain citizen ID. Okay, and they also go into two other features as well. So they have the blockchain citizens ID. They have the um, uh, icon blockchain vote and they have the icon blockchain S payment. So basically in a nutshell to explain, you have the ID card. So blockchain identification card is really easy to set up. You just have to fill out your basic details, take a photo, and then next you can click a photo of the QR generated, which transfers the icon ID card to the mobile phone. Then using this ID, you can also vote. So this is the creation of the blockchain ID card that would enable anyone that's using icons voting system. This is using the icon loop collaboration with the Korean national information society agency and the Korean national election commission as well. And then finally, the other cool thing that you could do is you have the icon blockchain S coin payment. So this blockchain product is going to enable users to transfer cash free and quickly. So the users will be required to scan a QR code of the product, which will transfer all the details of the product on the app for this. They've pegged one S coin to, um, you know, one Korean won, but I just wanted to show you that these are in development as well. And if you guys, uh, if you guys do want, I will drop this article, you know, from Marcus from D block who I've spoken to recently on the channel as well. Actually, I spoke to Jimmy who from apex too, if you guys want to, you know, dive back in the archives and look for that. Now I want to also talk about super quick. You have the new Zcash sapling protocol. Um, this went live around block block height 419200. This is reducing by some 90% length of construction process of a transaction and a memory reduction of over 97%. So this is good because it brings other tangible benefits to users such as parameters generated by an improved ceremony and the BLS 12 381 curve, which if you don't know what that is, it benefits all shielded address users However, at the moment, funds cannot be transferred from legacy shielded addresses to the new sapling shielded addresses without revealing amounts. But if you're interested and this concerns you, I'll definitely drop this below for you guys. We also have Cardano. You have Trezor are currently undergoing preparation to support Cardano as well. They're also looking to support a bunch of other things, but I know Cardano fans are definitely excited about that. Moving on, I also wanted to talk about Monarch. So Monarch, they have the app for iOS and now they have it for Android. Android as well. If you guys aren't familiar with uh, what this is, this is also, well, this is actually Crypto Beatles. He's the CEO. We actually had a, a live stream the other day. So, um, Unfortunately, it doesn't have all of the features of the iOS version, but they're looking to get it, you know, upgraded and integrated as quick as possible. So I just want to let you guys know that if you do have an Android, you know, it's available, but they're working on some features that still need to get upgraded. So also wanted to just mention Puma Pay has now joined forces with Mina Pay. I'm really starting to wonder if Puma Pay really is going to be the PayPal, the decentralized PayPal. I think that they just might end up taking the, taking the cake on that one. And I also wanted to talk about Deep Cloud AI. So they've announced their new logo and new website. Now here it is over here. Now, normally I wouldn't bring up something like a new logo or a new website, but what actually interested me was like how much thought went into this logo. They literally talk about the color palette being divided up into primary and secondary palettes. Each triangle represents a node in the Deep Clown AI uh, ecosystem. Obviously, the shape of all the nodes together forms a cloud. This represents cloud computing. They deliberately chose to use triangles to represent the node, the service uh, to the community, and fair incentives. And I don't know. I just thought it was like one of the most like thought out logos ever. So definitely check out Deep Cloud AI guys. I mean, I've done an interview with these guys. They're definitely undervalued for sure. They're doing really great things and they have a very good team, you know, lots of experience in the industry. So definitely have a look at that. And yeah, I mean, website looks great, guys. Website looks great. So moving on, I want to talk about another 
freaking hack, guys. So now you have the small exchange based in Alberta, Canada that's gone offline. Just before their Twitter page went offline, Maple Change had announced on Twitter that they had no more funds to pay anyone back. So here's the tweet right here. It says, due to a bug, some people have managed to withdraw all the funds from our exchange. We are in the process of a thorough investigation for this. We are extremely sorry that it has to come to an end like this. Until the investigation is over, we cannot find anything. Now, some people were pointing towards the fact that earlier in the day, Maple Chains had reported to its users that it was doing an upgrade to its servers, so they think that maybe this had something to do with the vulnerability. So the total amount of Bitcoins involved was 913, which was around $6 million, which isn't a ton of money in the grand scheme of things, but it still is a lot of money when you consider that it was other people's money, right? So getting back to the story, it says that unfortunately, it seems like most of this is pointing to an exit scam. Okay, so for starters, there's no need for the exchange to delete its social media pages or completely disappear in quite the fashion as it has. I mean, guys, even if we go all the way back to breaking, Mount Gox appears to be insolvent. Even they tried to get the money back, okay? So getting back to you know what's going on with this, the short span of time between the announcement of the bug and the total disappearance of the exchange seems kind of weird, right? And then the domain itself registered at GoDaddy is registered to a Flavius P, which is weird because most professional operations go to some lengths to be you know above board, especially those that handle other people's money. So unfortunately, anyone that has their money yeah, I mean, that looks like an exit scam, guys. So just be very careful. Uh, I have I can't stress enough, take your money off the exchanges, guys. We also have to bring up this story again. So this is MasterCard. We spoke about this, but it's like people are celebrating this for some reason. MasterCard has filed a patent applying the concept of fractional reserve banking to cryptocurrency payments. So it's kind of like taking the worst part of the traditional system, applying it to blockchain and celebrating this for some reason. I don't quite understand it. Anyway, moving on, we also have Ripple has confirmed to Reuters that Amir Serhangi is leaving his position at Google to lead Ripple's global payments network, RippleNet. And also, IBM is acquiring Red Hat, which is interesting because they're going to buy it for $34 billion, which means that they're buying each share at $190, even though it's currently only $116. So clearly, IBM sees some value in this moving forward. And if that doesn't make you guys excited, well... There's always counting bulls. There's always counting bulls. So that being said, guys, I want to say thank you so much for coming back to my channel. Yes, it's Monday. It's back on the grind. When is this sideways movement ever going to end? Hopefully, we are at the bottom of that accumulation period. And things are looking up from here. But who knows? My guess is as good as yours. I'm accumulating. I'm still in. I believe in the space. Institutions are coming in. Fidelity. Backed. ETFs, Coinbase could potentially compete with the New York Stock Exchange. What else do you need, guys? That being said, my name's K-Dub. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for everyone that's been liking, subscribing, commenting. You guys are freaking amazing. Thank you for coming back to Crypto Zombies channel. Until next time, stay crypto and peace out.